Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we will be learning two tools. Are they the most powerful tools out there? No, but they are indeed important, and used in conjunction with the other things I've taught you, can become powerful tools. It's never about one singular tie that makes you awesome. It's about the amalgamation of tools you have learned and how you create something based off of that. So what am I teaching you today? Well, we're gonna go over chain stitching and single line braiding. Chain stitching is very easy and those of you who do a lot of crocheting know it immediately. And single line braiding is how to braid with one rope. Single line braiding is a wonderful filler and a wonderful ending to your ropes. Yes. Yes, we shall. First off, safe, sane, consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get new rope, but you can't get a new life. And consensual. Marie and I are both consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we start eating on the delectable morsels of this tutorial, we must first thank my sponsor, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code RORY10 for 10% off. So to begin this chain stitching I will be doing on Marie's chest here, I'm going to take one end of my rope, and I'm going to create a little bit of a loop here. Going to give it a nice little twist to create the loop itself. And then we're going to give ourselves maybe four inches of the end of the rope here. And we're going to go around the rope and then we're going to cross over ourselves. And then we're going to go around the rope again. At this point you have this little bad boy right here which creates a hole. We're going to stick ourselves through that hole, essentially creating a clove hitch. We're going to pull on that. One of the things you can do is grip the knot with your thumb pull down on the knot while pulling on the end of the rope to secure the end of that clove hitch. And that'll give us the first loop that we're gonna use for the chain stitch. All we gotta do now is go around Marie. So once around Marie, we're gonna keep tautness right here on this new bite. We're gonna pull our body of the rope through that new bite, hold onto that with our finger, and then go back around again. Once back around, we're gonna put this new one through the loop we just made, and we're gonna go back around. Once back around, can you guess it? We're gonna go through this loop here again and go back around. Do I sense what, Marie? <gasps> pattern alert. Pattern alert, pattern alert, pattern alert. Okay, so yes, I'm sure you've noticed. We have a pretty easy pattern going on here. Go around, go through the loop, go back around. That is chain stitching. That's essentially it. It's easy, but at the same time, it can create wonderful things. Now look at that, it's pretty. If you're strapped for time, <laughs> BDSM joke, uh, <laughs> and need to create something very quickly, this is the thing to do. You need to bind someone up really easily, this is one of the things to do. It's aesthetically pleasing and it's quick. Now you got some leftover rope. You can stick it from underneath that hole, go around and tie it off in the back. Easy as that. And one of the best parts about it is how easily it comes undone. Now if you don't want it to go down the middle, you can actually start from any side and go diagonal if you wanted to, if not just go perpendicular to that side. The greatest thing about the chain stitch is its extreme versatility. You got an arm, you got a leg, you got a torso, it doesn't matter. Put a chain stitch on it, it'll work. Please don't do it to the neck. That versatility shows not only in its structural integrity and easy escape and untying, but it also shows and it's aesthetics. It can be used so many different ways. Single columns, double columns, torso, doesn't matter. Stilted, diagonal, down the middle, around the arm. You can create long, obtuse angles. You can create acute angles, but <laughs> let's face it, everyone looks acute in rope. <laughs> Boom, all right. Let's get to some of the diagonal stitching. So. As you see here, we have oblique running chain stitching, diagonal running chain stitching. So how do we accomplish this? You wanna make sure the loops that are going this way are longer than the loops that are going this way. So if we keep a loop this long, that means the one coming back this way is gonna be half that size. So when you come this way, make a short loop, go back around. This one on this side will be a much longer loop. Stilts the progress enough in order to create a diagonal stitch. Whee. 
I, I really just, I just like doing that. It's fun. More fun on a real person. <clears throat> I'm not saying anything bad about you, Marie. Such fragile confidence, my goodness, girl. You are beautiful, and I appreciate you. Let's get to some braiding. So let's say you got a single strand of rope, and you wanted to braid it. Well, braiding needs three strands of rope. Well, technically you do. All you gotta do is flip it over to where you have three strands of rope. Now, since we went behind this original strand, that means this is the dominant strand, the middle one, and these two are supporting strands. So how do you braid? One over the other. And most people already know this information. We'll go over with the left, go over with the right, go over with the left, go over with the right. Go over with the left, right, left, right. Now what will happen is down here, it will get bunched up. So you just want to find the strand that is the uh, the loose strand, the, the strand that's not folded in on itself, and pull that bad boy out. I said, pull that bad boy out. There we go. Since we went over on this left side, apparently, we're going to go with the right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Once we've done it a few times, we're going to find our loose strand, pull it out, begin braiding again. Right, left, right, left, right. Once you get closer down to the bottom of it, it's going to get a little bit harder to keep that straight and going. Left, right. Now, I don't recommend braiding, you know, that amount of length of rope, but when you have maybe a foot length of rope, and you just want to end it in some particular way, a pretty way. Likely not a chain stitch on the front, but that's the best place to show you. When you have a lot of excess rope in your rig, on the back, you want it to look a little aesthetically pleasing, a single rope braid just ends it nicely. Ha! Oh, we learned so much. I mean, we learned a fair amount. Not a huge amount. But over the course of the videos that I have done thus far, we've learned a large amount. And these were just another brick in this mortared wall of shibari knowledge we've created. Not the best metaphor, but well, you know, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I hope you had as much fun learning as I did teaching you. And I would be remiss if I did not bring up my other sponsors for today, the wonderful people at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams, and without them, these artistic endeavors would be so much harder to accomplish. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of shibari kombaku things you would like me to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is my brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.